Welcome to Community Presbyterian Church and our home worship for January 17, 2021. Just a few announcements before we begin our worship. I will again be hosting our virtual coffee hour on Zoom at 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Over these last few weeks, I've invited you to say the Lord's Prayer in whatever form you know best. Starting this week, I will be using different versions of that prayer here and on the screen in hopes of accommodating as many versions as possible. Often when I lead worship in an ecumenical crowd, I can hear the different versions and am able to allow time for everyone to finish their version. Unfortunately, when I am recording these services, I only hear my own voice. So apologies if there has not been enough time for everyone to complete their own version. With the latest state of emergency orders from the province of Ontario now in place, not only our in-person worship services are suspended, but my availability at the church each Wednesday morning must be suspended until further notice. To continue your financial support for the congregation, please mail your offerings to the church address as it appears on the screen, with attention treasurer on the envelope. It is up to us all to do everything we can to help stop this virus from spreading. Let us do our best to continue checking in on each other over these weeks of separation. Stay home, be safe, be well. Let us take a moment to quiet our hearts and minds as we prepare to worship God. Let us join in our call to worship responsibly. Before we were born, God knew us. God knit us together in the womb. God searches out our paths and tracks us along our way. So we praise God because we are fearfully and wonderfully made. There is nowhere we can go where God is not with us. How wonderful are God's works. Let us worship God together. Now let us join Susan and I in our opening hymn.
Let us come before God in prayer. God, ever creating, ever loving, ever leading, you are stillness when we are frantic. You are truth when we are confused and perplexed. You give us freedom when we are paralyzed by fear. You send us light when we stumble in the darkness. You are love when we feel lonely and empty. For all that you are, all that you have been, and all that you will be for us, we praise you, Creator, Christ, Spirit. We turn to you in worship to listen for your voice and seek your way for us. Desiring to be transformed people, we bring to you our prayers of confession. Merciful God, you call us to fullness of life, but we have settled for much less. We have wandered from your ways and wasted your gifts. We ignore the pain of others and turn our faces from injustice. At times, we have hidden from the truth, especially when it calls us to do what we are afraid to do. We have given up in despair when problems around us seem overwhelming. Forgive us our small faith. In silent prayer, we bring our personal confessions to you now, Lord. Give us courage and strength to accomplish any task that you set before us and give us hearts of grateful love to acknowledge your presence in our lives and live that presence with great joy as we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Believe the good news. In Christ, God has offered us forgiveness for all our sins and shortcomings. Trust that this forgiveness is for you and know that God's steadfast love and grace endure forever. Thanks be to God. As we prepare to hear God's word, let us pray. Spirit of truth and life, speak to us in the rich and ancient words of the scriptures. Let us hear your call so that we may leave behind our old ways and follow in the footsteps of Christ, the living word in whose name we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 43 to 51, and I'll be reading from the NIV translation. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me, Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, you believe me because I told you I saw you under the fig tree you will see greater things than that. He then added, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God within us, for the word of God around us. Thanks be to God. Now let us join Di and Susan in our next hymn. I 
the Lord of sea and sky. I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin. My hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go. it was the unlikeliest meeting. Nathaniel didn't even want to meet this guy. He was just doing it as a favor to his best friend, Philip. I mean, honestly, the one of whom the prophet spoke? Some self-appointed teacher from a backwoods little town of Nazareth? Turned out, though, that this guy, Jesus, had a pretty good sense of humor. He had quipped right back, Glad to meet you, Nathaniel, an Israelite without deceit. Now that may sound like some kind of backhanded compliment. Maybe Jesus was saying he appreciated Nathaniel speaking his mind and hadn't taken any offense to the whole Nazareth comment at all. But when we hear this conversation, we probably realize there's a double meaning involved. Jesus is calling Nathanael an Israelite also brings echoes of the Jacob story into their conversation. The Jacob from the Old Testament. Jacob, 
the deceiver who would be known as Israel. But Nathanael is an Israelite without deceit. Well played, Jesus. The score in this conversational sparring about hometown is one each. It's an unlikely beginning to a relationship. But wait, maybe not. After all, Jesus wasn't there to hear the Nazareth comment. So how did he know what he had said? But even more, how did he know me, Nathanael wondered. Jesus says he saw Nathanael sitting under a fig tree, but that is impossible. So maybe Philip was right after all. Nathanael now believes. And the traditional phrases start pouring out of his mouth. You are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus confirms it with yet another Jacob reference. This time to Jacob's ladder. He says the angels will go up and down on the son of man. Meaning Jesus himself. He's talking about Jacob's experience in Genesis 28, where heaven approached so close to earth that the inhabitants of the two realms could meet. And now in Jesus, not just in one geographical place, but in the human Jesus, the realm of God has come that close. What an unlikely beginning to Nathaniel's walk with Jesus. But what is more unlikely than heaven meeting earth? Heaven is where love reigns, where there is room for all of God's children at the same table, where in the words of a friend of mine, nothing is broken and no one is missing. Not at all what our earth is like. We know the mess this globe is in. A glance through the morning paper or wherever you get your world news from shows us a world that couldn't be more different than God's realm of love. There is still war, global warming, political gridlock, children without health care, and this pandemic going on and on. And last week, unfortunately, we saw a horrible display in the capital of our neighbors to the south, the USA. We witnessed what happens when one person and their followers don't get their own way. We witnessed no love, no peace, no joy. We witnessed violence, hatred, and pain. That's what happens, hopefully, in this coming week as things improve and things change and things are remembered. Calm, decency, and love can return to the U.S. of A. I love that this scripture passage comes up in the lectionary on this particular weekend. With all the distractions going on in the news, Martin Luther King Day might have been overlooked. We might have expected it to have a higher profile after the troubles around the world last summer that were raised over the police actions and they reinvigorated calls for equality for all people. We might have thought it was the beginning of a change in attitude. It reminds me of another unlikely beginning The time, 1955, the place, Montgomery, Alabama, the issue, forced segregation on city buses. There were local pastors gathering at Dexter Avenue Baptist Church, strategizing. Rosa Park has recently been arrested for refusing to give up her seat on a bus to a white person, and her trial is coming up soon. A lot of ideas go back and forth but nothing clear emerges in that church hall. 
until at last an unlikely thing happened. A young pastor of the church, new to town, unknown to the city fathers, a guy in his 20s, raises his hand, and the boycott had a leader. He was a newcomer to this circle, but like Nathaniel, he has this experience in Jesus of the reign of God come near and is now an ambassador of that place, that meeting of heaven and earth, inviting others to walk on a street where the reign of God has gotten a foothold. It truly was unexpected. Many years later, now well-known Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. would describe his glimpse of what it looks like when the reign of God comes near. He said, one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. One day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. With Martin Luther King's words, through his actions and according to his dream, we could see it too. Because he raised his hand, stepped up to walk in that place where heaven and earth meet. Because he stepped up to walk with Jesus, it turned out that one day may be closer than ever thought. It's hard to follow Jesus to those unexpected places sometimes, too often the reign of God enters our world and has a cost. And Dr. King knew that as well. From the unlikely location of a Birmingham jail, he wrote about a letter he had received from a white man urging his caution. All Christians know that the colored people will receive equal rights eventually. But the teachings of Christ take time to come to earth. Dr. King responded, such an attitude stems from the strangely irrational notion that there is something in the very flow of time that will inevitably cure all ills. Actually, he said, human progress comes through the tireless efforts of persons willing to be co-workers with God. Early Christians entered a town in the conviction that they were a colony of heaven, called to obey God, small in number, but they were big in commitment. By their effort and example, they brought an end to ancient evils. The time is always ripe to do right. In Jesus, the unexpected happens. And Nathaniel saw it. Heaven gets a foothold on this earth. As Sojourner's Jim Wallace says, in Jesus, God hits the streets. Nathaniel, now a follower, however unlikely, will walk that street too. Martin Luther King helped a whole generation see where the ways of heaven begin to get an unlikely foothold on this earth. He helps us remember that walking with Jesus means working for justice, revealing in our midst already a world where love reigns, a realm of God's shalom, of wholeness, where nothing is broken and no one is missing, where a table is spread and all are made welcome. I read of that kind of a welcome once. It too was unexpected a denominational mission trip to the Congo. The participants were deep in the forest, bumping along on nearly impassable roads with a pickup and a van. Rounding a bend, they came to a full stop, and they found nothing. 
a large tree was fallen in their way. They piled out. They stood there scratching their heads. And then there was a rustle among the trees and a group of children, curious as children will always be, appeared. Then their moms were there with them, carrying parcels wrapped in brightly colored cloths. And in a moment, some men were there as well, carrying machetes and knives and a big wooden door. The men with the tools went straight to a tree and got to work cutting. The others placed this door on the forest floor. And then suddenly, the door became a table. The women began to unwrap their parcels and revealed peanuts and bananas and orange soda pop. And they spread that feast and invited their travelers to partake. Strangers on the side of a road, people of that place came out to a need and they spread a table. And in that act of hospitality was a glimpse of God's reign come near. Karl Barth is supposed to have said, when you preach, you've got to have the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other. And he was right. The call of Nathaniel reminds us that when we walk with Jesus, we walk in those unlikely places where heaven meets earth. In this fragmented world, we represent God's reign gaining a foothold here through us. And our actions need to show that. One act of simple hospitality in the midst of want, a hand raised to volunteer for leadership, a phone call to someone feeling alone, all moments so often unexpected where heaven meets where we catch a glimpse of a time and place where nothing's broken, no one is missing, and the table is spread for all of God's children. Amen. Now let us join us and enjoy the ministry of music with Di. Christian sisters, Christian brothers, working for the Lord, striving all together in His grace. Jesus is beside us, bringing us back home, making sure we never stumble until we see His face. Take strength from being one with God, for He will dwell in you. Invite the Holy Spirit in, He'll fill you and through. You can leave behind the darkness, what a glorious sight, but enjoy and happy confidence you see heaven's loving light. God would have us for us all, and he gives us the choice to accept his invitation and to listen to his voice. For he is always waiting for you to let him in. So sincerely beg forgiveness, will wash away your sin. Take strength and Christian children, brothers, sisters, one and all. In earnest, pray each night and day, and God will hear your call. And fear not what the world may bring, for he watches over you, and know he'll bring you home to him when life on earth is free. Yes, that happy day Christ will return from heaven in clouds descend and come to us who wait for him and his new Jerusalem. And with wonder, perfect rapture, let's bring others to believe. Let their spirit with the force and love fill from the Trinity. Christian sisters, Christian brothers, servants of the Lord, Striving all together in His grace. Jesus is beside us, bringing us back home, making sure we never stumble until we see His face.
Let us pray for the people and the needs of our world. God of all life and each life, each week our prayers combine with those of people in many different places. We face many different challenges and also a common challenge, responding to the pandemic, though in so many different contexts. We thank you for honoring all our prayers with the gift of your spirit so that we can find strength and wisdom that we need in you. We remember before you today people living face to face with war and violence. In those places where hatred has been stirred up and fear stalks people in their own streets, we pray for all those displaced by violence seeking refuge among us or in camps and communities around the world. God, speak to us a word of peace. Embrace us with your love. We remember before you today people living face to faith with so much economic uncertainty. For those who have lost their jobs or worry what may happen as this year unfolds. God, speak to us a word of reassurance. Embrace us with your love. We remember before you today people living face to face with discrimination and social prejudice. For those who are bullied at school, at work, or at home. For those who are made ashamed of who they are. God, speak to us a word of dignity. Embrace us with your love. We remember before you today people living face to face with illness and suffering. For those struggling with disability made more complex these days. For those who know grief or anxiety, especially those cut off from comfort or support by months of pandemic isolation. God, speak to us a word of healing. Embrace us with your love. We remember before you today people divided by differences of race or creed of culture, gender, or generation. And we pray for all those who seek to build bridges of understanding and cooperation across the differences. God, speak to us a word of reconciliation. Embrace us with your love. We remember before you today your whole creation and its many vulnerable facets and faces. Teach us how to care for the rips and tears in the fabric of the world you love so we may live together wisely. God, speak to us a word of wisdom. Embrace us with your love. God of new possibilities in Christ, you create a future for each of us, giving us strength and opportunities to flourish in our faith. In whatever way we can, we bring our gifts to your church for their work. Thank you for these gifts. Use them and us to create new possibilities in the world for those who are uncertain about what the future holds. Our gifts are a token of our trust that you hold the future for us all. Now we come to you again, Lord, in silent prayer, to offer our worries and to say thank you for our blessings. Help us to trust your guidance and presence, Lord. Help us remember that there is no time in which we are out of your care. Enable us to be serving in ministry and mission with joy and confidence. Heal our wounds. Bind up our bruises and broken spirits. Put us on a pathway of peace, for we ask in Jesus' name. And in doing so, we join our voices to Jesus' followers around the world. We pray the words he taught us in whatever form we know best, saying, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now let us join with Susan and Di in our closing hymn. Take time to be holy, speak oft with thy Lord, abide in him always, and feed on his word. Make friends of God's children, help those who are weak, forgetting in nothing his blessing to see. Take time to be holy, the world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. join in our benediction responsibly. God sends us out so that grace will not be rare in our time. Here we are, ready to go and share love and mercy with those around us. Jesus calls us to go out so that justice will not be rare in our time. Here we are, ready to speak truth to power walking with those on oppression's mean streets. The Spirit fills us with compassion so that peace will not be rare in our time. Here we are, offering hope to those living in fear, working for reconciliation in brokenness. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Amen. Watching from above